before you continue watching this, I highly recommend that you watch my initial discussion on aromaticity and reactions of benzene because that will be the fundamental uh, set of details for you to understand completely what we will be talking about here. If you did that, then let's proceed. What we knew a while ago was that generally for reactions of benzene, it's quite simple and for us to execute the mechanism of electrophilic substitution, we just need to literally copy benzene, find the electrophile, and add it to benzene. And we're done. So let's do that again and again and again using different reagents. So for example, I have your benzene, and then my reagent is a halogen in the presence of a catalyst. All you have to do is to recognize that in an X2 or halogen, most likely, again, I'm going to try to avoid drawing so much arrows, but basically benzene will try to, uh, this is actually a horrible arrow, but notice that I drew benzene with its uh, pi bonds in circles just to make it simple. But the idea is benzene will basically give one of its uh, electrons to one of the halogens, and then the catalyst will actually provide the capability for this X to have a more positive and a more negative X. That's the long story short, of course, but the, the bottom line is benzene is just going to attach to one of the X's and that other X will be taken care of by our catalyst using like multiple arrows and steps. But we end up basically with this product. We're done. Oh, by the way, the name of this reaction is, of course, halogenation in general. Of course, if you're going to be more specific, if X here was chlorine, it's chlorination of benzene. If bromine, it's uh, bromination of benzene and so on. And our product here is simply a halobenzene. Chlorobenzene, bromobenzene, iodobenzene, you get the pattern. The reagents for chlorination are usually chlorine with a catalyst ferrochloride. If it's for bromination, we use bromine in the presence of, ca of the catalyst uh, ferric bromide. If it's for iodination, we often use iodine in the presence of cupric chloride. Okay. For fluorine, we don't normally have reagents for it. These are the three most common reagents you will see in textbooks for uh, halogenation of benzene. Here, if you start with benzene, you may have a reagent using, or that is, nitric acid in the presence of sulfuric acid catalyst. In this particular reaction, the sulfuric acid is actually going to initially protonate nitric acid, but there's going to be something after that. Basically, as you read this, sulfuric acid is a dehydrating agent for nitric acid, meaning that this will actually remove water from this. I did mention a while ago that, uh, what's this? that sulfuric acid will protonate our nitric acid, so it's going to be H2NO3. But that would be followed by removal of water, which is removal of H2O. That means I'm going to remove these two hydrogens and one of those two nitrogens, giving us an NO2 plus electrophile. We call this the natronium ion. And basically, this is the electrophile that I will stick to benzene. So benzene will get that, and ta-da, we're done. This process is called nitration, and our product is basically called nitrobenzene. On another scenario, you can have benzene with uh, sulfur trioxide in the presence of sulfuric acid. And here, uh, although we don't get any dehydration, sulfuric acid will do the same thing I mentioned a while ago, that it's a protonating agent, meaning that you know, skipping all the arrows that we need to draw, the SO3 will be protonated to become SO3H+. Okay, so this is called the sulfonium cation. And this will be the target of benzene, giving us the product benzene with SO3H. The name of this reaction is sulfonation because you added a sulfonium group. And the name of this is actually benzene sulfonic acid. Okay, here, if I have benzene and I try to react it with an alkyl halide, usually an alkyl chloride, we usually need the 
uh, Lewis acid catalyst, aluminum chloride, which will help us later on. So benzene is nucleophilic, right? And in Rx, the R is the partial positive one, X is the partial negative one. And since this is a nucleophile, our benzene will go to the electrophilic R, and the aluminum chloride will take care of the X. Long story short, of course, you know very well there are a lot of arrows that are supposed to be drawn if you want to know the complete story. But we're not going to do that. Long story short, the alkyl group will be added to benzene, and uh, we're done. The final product is called an alkyl benzene. And the name of this is alkylation because you added an alkyl group. Most of the time, this is very popular such that we honor the name of the two people who formulated this reaction. So the name often found in textbooks for this is called the friedel crafts alkylation. A similar reaction involves benzene, but instead of using an alkyl halide, we use an acyl halide. In the presence of, once again, the Lewis acid catalyst aluminum chloride, and uh, remember that what we're looking for always is the electro uh, sorry, electropositive part, the par positive part. And since oxygen here is pulling electrons away from this carbon, this carbonyl carbon, this carbonyl carbon is actually the positive portion. Meaning that if I have my benzene, it will target that carbon. The aluminum chloride will take care and uh, remove the X from that. And basically, what we're going to do is to stick the, ca the carbon first that is attached to the double bond O, or the, that is double bonded to O. And then this R will go along with it. And of course, the X has been, you know, dealt with by our catalyst, giving us this product. Since what we added this time is an acyl group, remember, acyl means R with a carbonyl, then... Our product here is an acyl benzene. And thus, the name of this reaction is very similar. It's actually also by Friedel and Crafts. So we now call this Friedel Crafts, what else? Acylation. Do note that we can also call this a different thing. The product here can be called an aromatic ketone. And uh, do you agree that our product is a ketone? Well, this benzene could be an R, right? So R, C, O, R is in fact a ketone. So actually, both these two terms are correct in terms of describing the structure here. So uh, acylation will give us acyl benzene or an aromatic ketone. Okay. So those are the basic reactions of benzene, and hopefully you see that it just happens again and again and again. The pattern is predictable. You just have to know what to attach to benzene. But once I have my first substituent on benzene, things are going to be interesting. Difficult, but interesting. First, before we go forward in this slide, is benzene nucleophilic or electrophilic? Once again, the fact that benzene has a lot of electrons inside it, it's going to be electron-rich, so it's, it's nucleophilic. And therefore, it's as if benzene, if it was a person, it would be like, hey, you know why I'm reactive? You know the secret why am I, why am I reactive? It's because I have electrons. And therefore, we can say that with regards to, re the, to the reactivity of benzene, its reactivi uh, reactivity increases... If I have electron richness, okay, or meaning if I have electrons going to benzene, so it's like if I have benzene, if the electrons are going to benzene, it's going to be more reactive. But it's going to be unreactive if I have electron poorness on benzene. That is, if you can imagine electrons, well, not even here, electrons here from benzene, going away from it. And sometimes, substituents on benzene may do either. Some substituents will give electrons to benzene, some will take it away. And therefore, our next topic is how the substituents of benzene can affect its overall reactivity. So, I have he here this kind of uh, spectrum 
from the most deactivating to the most activating. I don't know if the trend is students are asked to memorize this or not, but I always thought this, that I, I said to my students, this is not something that you must strictly memorize. There are ways or patterns in the substituents that we can see to tell if it's an activator or a deactivator. First, I told you a while ago that anything or any scenario where electrons are given to benzene will increase its reactivity. And in fact, we call such substituents as activators because they activate benzene by giving electrons towards our benzene. And this is where your structural effects will be tested. For example, the fact that, you know, if I add benzene to another benzene, we would actually have improved the localization. And although that's going to be limited by the fact that benzene is not likely to give to its adjacent benzene because it, it prefers spinning around on itself, that is still somehow minor help, meaning it does give some electrons to benzene. And by doing so, it is activating. R groups. How about R groups? Imagine this. I have benzene with a CH3 group. Isn't it that this carbon is sp3? And this one is an sp2 atom. And if you remember your delocalizations, you remember that in this case, we would have actually hyperconjugation. The capability of my sp3 carbon to delocalize its electrons towards benzene. Oh, we just gave electrons to benzene. Therefore, this is activating. Or how about this? Both of them, meaning this is the bond to benzene, both of them have oxygen as the first atom bonded to benzene. And, well, if you can imagine that, the fact that I have a lone pair beside an sp2 atom, then oxygen is therefore bound to give to benzene, and just like the same thing, electron given to benzene is activating. But, when we compare oxygen to nitrogen, remember their le relative electronegativities? If I ask you, and you may want to answer this before I say it, which is more electronegative between O or N? It's oxygen, right? And the fact that oxygen is electronegative, you, you know if, it's gonna be, it's, if it was a person, it's going to be like, hey, I have lone pairs. Yeah, I will give it to benzene, but can I not do it like completely because I, you know, I also like electrons, something like that. But nitrogen, it doesn't care. It's like, hey, I'm nitrogen. I'm not electron. I'm not as electronegative as oxygen. I have my lone pair. Yo, go take it. And that sort of willingness of nitrogen to give electron pairs to benzene, so willing that it highly, highly, highly activates benzene, even more than anything with oxygen. And that kind of explains why everything here on the right are activating. All of them give electrons to benzene. Whereas the opposite is observed for everything at the left. For example, halogens are so electronegative that, you know, if I have benzene and I have a halogen, all halogens would think about are the electrons. It's going to be telling benzene to give, hey, give me your electrons. And benzene will comply. And the fact that Benzene gives its electrons, the electrons go away from benzene, that is going to reduce the reactivity of benzene or deactivate benzene. The same with this one and this one. If we try to draw COOH or COO, uh, CHO, let me do COOH. Isn't COOH like this? And my carbon here is attached to two oxygens, which will get the electrons of carbon. And as a consequence, this carbon will become partially positive. And in this case, we have carbon, like if it was a person saying, hey, I'm positive, I'm poor in electrons, I need electrons. And benzene, of course, can't do anything but give to that carbon because in human terms, it's kind of lacking. Like, we need mercy, something like that. And the fact that benzene gives its electrons away from the ring, once again, it's deactivating, even uh, more with two oxygens compared with one. SO3H, which is the sulfonium group, is actually even more deactivating. 
due to the lot to the number of oxygens and that sulfur is also relatively electronegative. But you know who is normally the most deactivating in the spectrum? It's the nitro group. Because the nitro group actually has a positive charge. And a while ago, a while ago I did mention that if I have partially positive carbons beside benzene, benzene will donate, right? And what more if I have completely positive nitrogens? This is actually the uh, real structure of the NO2 group. And the fact that nitrogen here is not even just partially positive, it is completely positive, meaning that benzene is going to be so forced to give its electrons. And since it gives so much out, then you can just imagine how deactivating this is. So hopefully, you get an idea of how we can assess activators or deactivators. It all comes from the question, can I imagine my electrons going away from benzene or going, going to benzene or away from it? And uh, this tells you if you have a, a little uh, rust already in your delocalizations and uh, inductive effects. This is something that will require that, so you may want to review that too. Next, we will be discussing the general effects of activators or deactivators with regards to how they direct succeeding substituents.